It's using AIS, um, which is the automatic identification system. And basically it pings out usually to satellite or uh, something on the shore. Um, when I find the ship names in news reports or even on Twitter, I can create a group and I can, so I made a Titanic group. It has six vessels in it. So then when I click on Titanic, it brings them all up and I can see them all at once. So I can see their movements. Hey everyone, it's Yaniv Hoffman back with another video and today we are in for a tweet as we chat with a steam Ray Baker. Welcome Ray, great to have you Hi. in the show. I'm glad to be here. So maybe Ray, best you will introduce yourself for those of the viewers that are not familiar with you. Sure, um, my name is Ray Baker. I am a senior OSINT analyst for a large consulting firm. Um, I do a lot of typical OSINT work as well as maritime. I focus a lot on maritime just because that's what I enjoy. And I do that at home as a hobby as well. Um, I am a licensed private investigator and I volunteer with a lot of OSINT organizations um, like NCPTF and um, OSINT uh, Operation Safe Escape and OSINT Curious. I was an executive board member and nice. I wrote a book. <laughs> and you wrote a book and it is the, <laughs> the book. <laughs> a deep uh, dive exploring the real world value of OSINT. Totally recommended. You know, I, I had the pleasure of reading uh, uh, this book and initially I, uh, I thought it will be a great resource for beginners. But as I continued and, and got into it more and more, it was a very comprehensive, uh, uh, detailed book for everyone that loves OSINT, but also professionals and they are few chapters that I, I myself learned uh, a lot, especially in the uh, OSINT uh, transportation intelligence that not Good. too many people <laughs> are familiar with. Also the cryptocurrency. So again, I will leave the, the link in the description also to uh, Ray's blog. And I really, really, really recommend to, to read the book for everyone that loves cybersecurity, for everyone that are interested in open uh, source intelligence. Thank you. Yeah, the idea that I had originally was a maritime book. And they're like, eh, I don't know about that. And they said, how about you do a general OSINT book? And I was like, okay, that sounds like a challenge. So I, I wanted to create something that was not, it didn't turn away beginners. It wasn't straight to coding or straight to a bunch of tools that are hard for people to understand. Because I think they read books and like new analysts will go to training and then they come home and they want to apply that to their own right. cases. And they just kind of stare at their computer, like frozen. <laughs> like, what do I do now? How do I apply this? So I wanted to start out with like, what, what is OSINT first of all, what's kind of some of the history behind it. And then some ethics and things like that, that I feel are really important and are kind of glossed over usually. And then I broke it down into sections. So social media, um, human intelligence, transportation, like you said, uh, cryptocurrency, financial stuff. And I start out really basic and I talk about um, kind of what it, what it is and then how we look into it and then uh, how we can pivot from it. So if you're talking about uh, a ship maritime, mm -hmm. I'll talk about that because that's my favorite. Um, I, I kind of set out what, what is maritime intelligence? And then what are we looking for? Um, ships, people on the ships, critical infrastructure related to the ships. And then how do we find that? So I, I included a whole bunch of pivot charts, which were really hard to stick in there. So I hope you guys like them because they, <laughs> they barely fit on the pages. I made them like- No, but it worked week. well. It worked well. I, I, I looked at it in, in depth actually. They were a little bit small, but I had to like cram them on the page. Um, but I wanted people to be able to see visually like how I would work through the process of that section, whatever I'm talking about. And then I knew that, you know, there's going to be people reading it who are not beginners, who are trying to learn something else. So I wanted to take those topics and then expand upon them so that like 
there are things you can continue to do after you read it. Like I'm giving you steps kind of how to get into it. And then I'm hoping that whoever reads it takes it like a little bit further. And I do cover maritime and critical infrastructure and things like that, that I don't think are covered often in OSINT books. Um, so hopefully that intrigues intermediate level people. Right, right. And, and tell me, you speak about that there are definitely many, many topics in the book. And if you look, if you can share a bit, which topic was the most challenging or rewarding to to write uh, about um, and the why? most rewarding was obviously transportation <laughs> because that's what i wanted to write to begin with and so i got to just pour my heart out about ships and vessels and cars and trains and planes um so that one was fairly easy i wrote that one like i just <laughs> got it all out on the page but the hardest one was cryptocurrency and financial intelligence because while I I understand it and know how to do it, I required a lot of my colleagues' input to make sure what I was saying made sense mm -hmm. because crypto can be really confusing. Um, so I appreciated all the input that I got from people on that chapter. Um, and that's always evolving. So hopefully what I put in there is not out of date. I, I included like NFTs and um, just general financial intelligence and research. Right. Um, but that one was probably the hardest. Definitely, I, I assume. I you you know what I like about uh, the book is 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 one is not the traditional uh, OSINT uh, books or guide that I I read uh, in the in the last uh, years. It's it covers mm -hmm. one many topics. It provides a lot of practical uh, understanding tools, methods, even the strategy uh, about. And I think I think you did a revolution around the, the maritime because I, before <laughs> that I'm not familiar with anyone at least uh, that was speaking about it in such passion that provided a lot of uh, uh, you know light uh, into it and so so cool. But but how did you reach the the maritime uh, uh, subject topic? I. I feel like I just fell into it. I, I was writing blogs to kind of teach myself OSINT when I started. <clears throat> so I'd have to pick topics and I would just kind of scroll on Twitter and just pick something that was interesting to me and then write a blog on it to train myself. Cause I figured if I could write about it, then I could talk about it. And then I know about it. Um, so one day I, I was just out of ideas. I, was, <laughs> I don't know what to write about. So I, I happened along like some maritime post and I, I hate that. I don't remember who posted it. It was just some quick thing about how OSINT is used to track a vessel or something. And I was like, I looked around and I Googled like maritime OSINT and there was like nothing out there. So I thought, Hey, maybe this is something new. People will like it. I can write about it and learn about it. I put one blog out and it just like blew up. So I, I did another one and another one, and then people started coming to me to ask me questions, and it just like grew from there. Wow, S super cool. So so who is using, in, in your now experience and uh, mind, who is using usually maritime uh, OSINT? Is it uh, more the government uh, that are tracking vessels? Or I know now from the Ukraine-Russia uh, war, many are also tracking uh, oligarchs, uh, yachts, etc. Also in the private sector, hobbyists, etc. But who is the main user of this maritime OSINT? Um, I think it's two people, two, two groups. Um, one is government. Obviously, they want to know what's going on between all the countries and what they're doing. Um, I'm not sure they entirely have a grasp or communicate um, their findings across like all of the the areas in government. Um, there's also the trackers, kind of like I am, just online tracking tracking people where they're going, what they're doing, even if they're just posting like, here's a ship, here's where it is. Then people like me can use that information, and it helps us gather you know, a, a, an overall picture of what a ship is doing. Right. So it plays a role. Definitely. So so maybe you know what you spoke about tracking and let, let's speak maybe about the this the sad story, the latest story about the Titan uh, 
a mini submarine that uh, actually unfortunately lost I saw some of your posts that you you were also tracking it and talking about it can you share uh, uh, with us a bit about that yeah so I wasn't I wasn't doing OSINT really it was more just seeing where it is and posting I wasn't like analyzing any of the data um, but I I was using a program called Starboard and I was tracking locations but I guess it was a little OSINT because I had to scour the internet for different mentions of different ships doing things and then I created a list of all of those vessels and then I started tracking them all at once so I could see where they were moving and which way they were going which ones were coming which ones were leaving and then I lined it up with the news like what was happening in the news so I kind of had a, a, an idea of what was going on and which ships were salvage <clears throat> salvage and which ships were just kind of hovering there for support and I hate to say it was fun because it was for a terrible reason, but yeah, you know. So I used Starboard, which is a pay tool. Um, unfortunately, many of the maritime tools are free to a point. Mm -hmm. um, they will let you look for a ship, but they won't let you look historically. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no way to track their movements over time, which is what I want to do. So this this is Starboard. And what I'm able to do is when I find the ships, which hopefully you can see that. Hopefully that's yes. Um, when I find the ship names in news reports or even on Twitter, I can create a group. And I can, so I made a Titanic group. It has six vessels in it. So then when I click on Titanic, it brings them all up and I can see them all at once. Mm -hmm. So I can see their movements over time. And I can pinpoint, like you can see the Adelante. So you are getting the information to the public, of course, uh, sources, the names of the, the vessels that are involved in the search, right? Yep. But then how, how do you identify the ship itself? Is it producing some signals or? It's using AIS, um, which is the automatic identification system. Mm -hmm. And basically it pings out usually to satellite or uh, something on the shore or even another ship, I believe. Um, so the ones that are turned on because you can turn it off um, and a lot of ships do that before they go through dangerous areas or if they're doing something they're not supposed to be doing, they will turn it off so nobody can track because they know, they know we track them. <laughs> um, so all of these ships have their AIS on and that's, that's how we're able to, to see them. And every, it depends on which system you're using, but every so often it'll ping out its location, its name, how much it weighs, um, which way it's going, uh, draft and all sorts of information that they can also edit if they want to. <laughs> so that's that's what I use to track. So each of these like these little dots are kind of um, pings that it had. So I basically just watch over time and you can see like this, this ship on the right is coming in, the cutter boat. Yeah, I see. So that came in on June 24th. So that's pretty close. I forget, I forget when they were found. Um, I think it came in after to like help with salvage. Wednesday, they saw some of the, right? Debris. Yeah, the uh, debris. This was, I'm looking now. Um. And then they all kind of hung around for salvage, and then around yeah. June 26th, they, they're all gone. Now, th those are only the ones I noted. There, oh. I'm sure there were some other ships there that maybe had their AIS off or weren't mentioned anywhere, so I didn't tag them, but they might have been around there, too. And the only way you could really see that is through satellite imagery. Mm-hmm. So with the system AIS, what, what actually can you track in the transportation? So vessels, we understand, yachts, of course. So you mentioned you are also licensed private investigator and part of my uh, um, deep dive actually on your blogs and uh, website. I also saw that you are one of the owners of case scenarios, case with a K, right? 
Yep, case scenarios. Yeah, which is a brilliant, I think, gaming tool, I call it, for training in OSINT. And uh, and not only, it's for everyone that are curious, that like uh, problem solving, etc. Of this session, we talked a bit about my daughter that was uh, playing the betrayal uh, chapter and lo- loved it. Now she's stuck and begging me to help her. <laughs> um, Don't help. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but can you maybe mention about uh, that as well? I think it's super cool for anyone that wants also to to get into to it, and everyone that are curious uh, people that like uh, mysteries, solving mysteries. That's the, I think a great venue. Sure. Uh, so case scenarios, case scenarios dot com. Um, we, me, and my co owner uh, Espen. We decided to come up with case after, you know, doing a bunch of OSINT training and playing in other capture the flag events um, that are used for training. And most of them are just one-off questions. There's no storyline. You do one question and then you get a completely different question. And it's, it's not like you're not going through a story. Um, So we wanted to take the capture the flag concept and put it into a media rich um, scenario is what we call, we call them. So the two we have out now, it there's a free one called betrayal. And the scenario behind that is you are playing as a private investigator uh, for the DA and you are trying to help solve a murder case where a man's wife fell down the stairs. Um, it's very true crime. Uh, I am a huge true crime fan, so I pulled a bunch of cases that I know and kind of smushed them together and added a whole bunch of detail. But basically the way it works is we have uh, a story, we have an intro, and you meet the characters, and then you get a case. And uh, throughout the case, as you're learning about these people, you get asked questions. So if you're in a house, it might ask you, like, uh, how many doors are in the house or something like that. And then you have to go find them and you have to answer the questions. And then it's all done in a role play kind of way. So you're never given a hint or um, a response like, no, that's wrong. Try again. It's always your boss or your friend or you know somebody you know in the scenario saying, hmm, that doesn't sound right. Maybe you could check the computer or something like that. Yes. So it's meant to keep you in in the scenario. And in that one, we actually have a report that you can submit that we return uh, the report with a message from your boss saying like, yeah, that was great. Or <laughs> no, maybe try again. <laughs> and all of the entries have been amazing. Um, the other one we have out is Dark Waters. And that is a pay one, but it's much longer. Um, it is, you are playing as an investigative journalist and you're in the small town of Glen Rock, Pennsylvania to help solve the mystery of why people are getting sick. And that one was our first one. It was very cool to make. I, I used to live in Pennsylvania. So a lot of that is like, it's close to my heart. <laughs> I live near that area. Um, so we mix uh, fake things with real things. So while the case might be fake, you might be in a real place looking at the real town. Um, So it's meant to feel real life while teaching you OSINT concepts that you can actually apply in your career. And our hope is to have like a whole catalog of them uh, from different perspectives, like maybe your PI or a detective or I don't know, a wildlife researcher. Um, Our next one coming out um, is a missing person scenario. So Wow. You will be helping find a missing person across many countries. And that one should be really cool. But the idea would be you could go on if you're into finding missing people, you could play that and get an idea of what working those cases would be like. Yeah, I agree. I think I, I had a great time. I didn't submit the, the report. I, I almost finished. I think uh, maybe today we'll, we'll finish it. But it's um, I think you you guys did it very well. It's uh, intriguing. It's not that uh, easy sometimes, uh, um, but you know there there are lots of reports, and you need to read, and you need to connect a lot of dots, and you build. I liked in the betrayal, you go to the 
uh, to the to this woman's house where she died and you need to explore the house and it's like a 3d model you can look in each room and you yeah. need to pay attention for many many details um <laughs> so it's, and it's only it's two cool. of us uh it's only wow. two of us i do all the media stuff and uh espen and i together create the scenarios and then he makes all the questions kind of in the background um so yeah it's it's fun. Sometimes, depending on the the clue we're trying to give, like I'll be out in the yard digging a hole and like placing something in it and taking a picture. <laughs> Very nice. So, so way back, you know. So I I found it through your uh, uh, website where I was uh, looking at your uh, blog. So maybe let's let's speak a bit about about uh, uh, the blog. So so one. I think you you released two. the The first new les, newsletter was just uh, released a week ago, right? Um, um I think I've done or two weeks ago. Two now, two or three. I've lost count. <laughs> <laughs> so so indeed, there is a lot of rich resources that anyone that in interested in OSINT um, uh, can can benefit from. So. How do you decide on the topics that you are covering in your uh, uh, blog and what is your primary, I can say, goal um, with this platform? So I I have a blog separate. Um, the OSIN Voyage is like the newsletter that I send out monthly or weekly. Um, it comes out on Mondays and it's, it's all transportation related. So train, ship, plane, vessels. Um, and throughout the week, I will save stories. So while I'm working, if I find something, I'll you know take a picture of it on my phone or send it to myself. So I save interesting stories that way. And then I, I just have a bunch of resources where I pull stories um, at the end of the week that I think are really interesting. Um, I try to cover, uh, you know, supply chain things that would be interesting to people who are interested in supply chain. Then more government related ones. Um, you know, war related ones, anything that seems interesting to a large group of people. I cover like uh, military exercises and um, accidents, derailments, things oh, like nice. that. Ships being in certain areas um, where they're getting a lot of attention. And my hope is that it can be used as like a jumping off point for investigations. Um, I often do that myself. I will see a news story or something and then it piques my interest and then I spend I don't know, way too much time looking into it. So that that was kind of my hope. Um, because I use Twitter for that and I don't know how long Twitter is gonna survive. So I I wanted to put something out that was meaningful since my book had already come out and that's what I was using the newsletter for. Um, so I didn't really have much else to post. And I so I thought, you know, give give something back, write a bunch of hopefully interesting links in there for other people. Very nice. And, and you know, I read that at the beginning of the book, you are speaking, you are telling a little about yourself. You were a graphic uh, designer. You do the the transition into uh, into OSINT. So, what's your advice for people that want to uh, to move into this uh, space? What skills or what's what capabilities they need to have? Um. First, I will say I transition in. 2019, I think. So it's kind of been a whirlwind since. Um, I was a graphic designer for about 15 years before that. Um, and I just decided to start going back to school. And when I did that, I knew it was a lot of money. And I was like, I need to make this worth it. <laughs> so I used kind of my marketing background to market myself. So I, I planned like who I want to be, who I want people to see me as, um, and what my blogs would sound like. And I kind of made a, a brand, I guess you would say, um, that I don't stray from. So people know when they come to me, they're getting maritime, they're getting OSINT, um, hopefully trusted OSINT. No, it's, um, it's and, amazing, you know, t uh, 2019, only uh, four years ago, which is, is nothing. And the brand is so strong and you, you, you found your... Uh, a spot and I think you are making a big impact definitely I hope so <laughs> I'm in this business I... 23 years and uh, you know I see the 
the journey you did and I, the, this um, this very very detailed tour of book and I mean very impressed. Thank you. Um, the one the one thing I tell everybody who asks me like how did you do this is just I I network. So when I was in school, I ran the um, the tech club. Mm -hmm. um, it was basically a, a few different um, degrees in cybersecurity and IT networking all put together in a club. And I was president and I mm -hmm. use Twitter and LinkedIn to kind of scout for uh, well-known people in the field. And I would ask them if they would come and give a talk just virtually. And when doing that, not only did everybody in the club learn something from someone who actually works in the field and not just like a stuffy CEO or whatever, um, but I made a connection so I could. And in fact, one of the connections I made actually got me in contact with Wiley. And that's how I ended mm. up writing the book. So those connections, I know everybody hates networking, but it's it's kind of a must, I think. I, I and agree. Then I, and then marketing yourself and blogging. People don't want to put themselves out there. Um, it, you don't even have to blog for anybody else. Just blog for yourself. Have content because the content that I was putting out, the, the blogs, the talks, is also how I, I got my job. They found me online, uh, Twitter, I think, and they reached out and they asked me to interview. So people are watching. Right, um, right. And the more evidence you have that you know how to do the work, I feel like that speaks a lot. Yeah, I agree. And this is how, by the way, I, I reach you. You know, I saw you actually the first <laughs> time with David Bombal. And uh, and then I got, I, I saw your publication in LinkedIn and I got to learn about the book itself. So uh, I bought the book. I reached out uh, uh, to you, definitely. So I think if I summarize what you say, if you want to get into this um into this field and you are the best example right 15 years in different uh, uh, profession different field but if you you are curious if you are consistent if you are passionate about what you do definitely you can make it you don't need to be afraid you just need to to jump um, right and a, a lot of it i know people don't like to blog and they don't know what to talk about and everybody has talked about everything so but like you can't think about that because your perspective is different from my perspective, even if we're writing the exact same topic. Right, um, right. You've had a whole journey before that that I haven't had. So we're going to write completely different. And giving talks, I mean, I I used to fail classes in high school and college if there was any public speaking ever. Like I would just not go. <laughs> I would stay <laughs> home and fail it and do like a report as a project. But when I when I started going to school, I, I didn't want to waste all the money. And I said, I have to just pretend to be somebody that I am not to get through it. Um, so I I did besides Harrisburg, I think was my first talk. And and they were great. And I went up and was terrified. And this <laughs> the seating was 360 seating. So mm -hmm. you're standing in the middle with people all around wow. you. <laughs> And and it was very scary, but I got through it. And then I did another one, and, then, and now I just do them. It's still it's still a little scary, but I, I you know, the more you do, the easier it is. But Amazing. don't be afraid to try. Yes, definitely, definitely. Great, great. So, everyone, again, Ray Baker, deep dive, a must in my uh, view. Super interesting. Um, thank you and very much. And an octopus. And <laughs> exactly, exactly. So here it is again. I will leave the links. Ray, I wish you best of uh, luck and success. Definitely, I, I will be following you to co continue following you. And I'm learning every time and every day. And thank you very much for uh, joining the show. Thank you. No problem. This was fun. Thank you.